Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So in this series, I wanna to talk to you guys about your knee movement or leg movement throughout the swing, which is not really talked about too much in detail, but it can be great evidence as to the correct sequencing of rotation, your weight movement, and can also have a big influence in the overall movement of your body. So in this series, I wanna give you guys some clarity on what to look for in order for you guys to better gauge your positioning. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like. And if you are visiting my channel for the first time, please subscribe to see more golf related content. Okay, so in part one, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about your knee movement uh, throughout the backswing, but I wanna start off with setup. And specifically, I wanna talk about the function of foot flare. Okay, so um, when a player stands over the ball, gets in the setup position, I wanna tell you guys or talk to you guys about uh, the function of whether or not you should have your toes pointed straight forward or flare them out, um, how much to do so, and, and why, okay? So the players that, uh, that come in, I see a lot um, that they have their toes pointed really, really straight, okay? And um, the, foot, the amount of foot flare can actually change how much you get your knees internally rotated or externally rotated. Okay, that, that just means that like, the knees are, are turned in or more turned out, okay? Now, when a player typically has their toes turned in, that gets their knees turned more inwards like this way, okay? And when that happens is when they make their backswing, it actually puts a lot more pressure on the joints when they try to turn, okay? So a great experiment that you can do is you can turn your, your toes really, really inwards and then try to turn in your backswing. You'll feel some strain in, in the knees, okay? Now, um, I, I advocate the players to have a little bit of, of flare in their feet, you know, in, in the range of 20 to 30 degrees. Um, you don't have to flare them out like really, really uh, a lot like this, um, but you just want it a little bit flared just so that you can get your knees uh, or your, your legs pointed outwards just a little bit, okay? And you'll find that when you, when you do that, when you try to turn in your backswing, uh, that it actually is a lot easier on your knees or easier on your joints, okay? And and having a little bit of feet flare can actually give you or help to give you a little bit more mobility in terms of uh, rotation throughout the backswing as well, okay? And the foot flare can also um, help to manage the lateral movement of your knees, okay, right and left. So usually if a player has a, their toes pointed forward or even pointed inwards, uh, when they make their backswing, their knees will tend to look uh, much closer together. Okay, whereas if you flared out your, your toes a little bit um, and get your knees turned out just slightly, uh, it'll help to widen the gap between the knees. So if you are someone that may be wondering why the knees look so close, then having the feet flared can actually help to influence that. So when it comes to the backswing, the first thing that you want to pay attention to is the changing in flex of your knees. Okay, so you can see that when I get to the top of my backswing that my lead knee has bent more and my trail knee has straightened out just a little bit. Okay, so when you change the flex of your knees, that's gonna allow your hips to turn, but also turn on a tilted angle, all right? Now, if I made a backswing and I didn't change any amount of knee flex at all, and I kept my knees completely still, you, you physically can't turn your hip. Also, when you, when you do that, your hips will tend to stay more level to the ground, whereas if I change the, the flex of my knees, you can see that my hips open up more, and my hips go more into tilt uh, to my lead side. So when looking at it from the face on view, when I change the flex of my knees, um, you're also gonna have to account for any lateral movement in the knees. So the, the movement of the knees kind of right or left throughout the backswing. So when I'm explaining these things to uh, my students, I get them to understand that the movement of your knees is, can be directly controlled by the amount of rotation in your hip and also the lateral movement right and left of your hip throughout the backswing. So if I were to just stand over a golf ball, if all I did was turn my hip, right, you would, you would find that as you turn the hip, it's very, very easy to have a lot of knee flex change, okay? But after a certain point, once you keep turning, you'll find that the, your lead knee will tend to collapse or start to collapse more and more, and your knees are gonna appear much closer together. And when it comes to the lateral movement, if I just move my, my entire hip to my trail side, you can see that eventually my knees will follow in that same direction. And then in the opposite direction, 
my hip goes more into my lead side, you'll see that again, my knees will follow in that same direction. So now I'm just gonna go over three uh, mistakes that I see that are very, that's very common. Um, and then just one way to fix it, okay? So the first mistake I see is just from the face on view. And when a player makes their backswing, I, I see that their lead knee collapses um, behind the golf ball, okay? And the first instinct for people to try and fix this is to focus solely on their lead knee and spread out their knees like this, okay? So they're only focusing on pushing out their lead knee, but you can see that my entire pelvis or hip is positioned too far behind the golf ball, okay? So if you're back in this position, one thing you can do is you can focus on positioning your hip more into the lead side than before, okay? Just making it go more laterally to the lead side. And you can see that when I'm doing that, when I get my hip to be positioned more into my lead side, my, my lead knee is gonna follow the movement of my hip, okay? So it's gonna be uh, positioned further in front of the golf ball and won't appear as collapsed, okay? So it, you don't wanna do this or, or push this lead knee out if you're if you have this mistake because that will actually hinder uh, mobility in in terms of rotation in the lower body. Okay, so just think about having your hips positioned more into the target or more laterally into the target. And just so you guys know, uh, when you make your backswing, it's totally okay for the lead knee to to collapse in just a little bit. Okay, uh, you don't have to have your knees uh, bend perfectly straight back or straight through. All right, um, it's, it's okay for that lead knee to kind of collapse in just so that it's, it's positioned maybe just, just inside of the, lead, of, of the lead heel, but you don't want to see or you don't typically want to see that lead knee collapse so much that it gets behind the golf ball. So if you're doing things more correct, then it should look more like this as opposed to this. Okay, so the next mistake, um, you can see this better from the side view but when a player makes their backswing, I see that they straighten out both knees, kind of like this, okay? You don't see much change in flex there. And looking at it from the face on view, if you straighten out both knees like that, it's really not good for power, but all you wanna focus on if you, if you do find out you are this kind of player is to take away flex just from your trail knee, okay? And, and you wanna maintain more flex or, or add more flex into the lead knee, okay? So it should look more like this, as opposed to this, okay? So you're just taking away um, too much flex in the lead knee if you are this kind of player. Now, the third mistake is a player that would change the, the knee flex too excessively, okay? So you can see that um, they've, they've actually locked out their trail knee like this. You'll see a large gap uh, between the knees typically. And the reason why you don't wanna do this is because one, it'll be harder for you to manage rotation, but also, when you really excessively change the knees, your hips will tend to go too much into uh, tilt to the lead side. Okay, so if your hips tilt too excessively to the lead side, that can also change your posture um, of the upper body. It can actually get your upper body to lower down. Okay, and that'll actually encourage people to early extend um, in the downswing. So what I would suggest is if you are filming yourself, that when you do change the knee flex, you have to maintain some amount of flex in the trail knee. Uh, you don't want to totally lock it out, so it has to stay a little bit flexed. And you can pay attention to the amount of space between your knees. You can see um, like a little bit of a space, but you don't want to see a massive space like this. Okay, so again, it's just for this kind of player, you, you want to manage the amount um, of knee flex change in your trail knee. Thank you guys so much for watching. Now, if you have any questions about anything that I talked about, you can leave a comment down below. Be sure to follow me on my Instagram at Jonathan K. Moss, where you can inquire about my online lessons. I will also leave a link to my website in the description box below as well. And before you go, be sure to check out this video right here, which is another video I did in the past talking about footwork, which can give you more insight into the lower body.